So Louis Verecchio has an article that came out on his blog today. It says the SSPX to be or not to be regularized. And I wanted to provide some commentary on this, some thoughts, and would welcome feedback from anybody who's watching this video. I'm just going to go over some highlights of this. And if it looks kind of funny, it's just because I moved the article into uh, a reader called Instapaper just so that I could highlight parts of it. So one of the things Verecchio has said and has become well known over the last few months is he says, I'm convinced that Jorge Bergoglio has plainly judged himself a formal heretic and therefore no pope at all. And so Louis Verecchio's premise is that Benedict XVI is still the valid pontiff and he would get into a whole bunch of different reasons why it's plain that Francis is in fact not a pope and would be therefore an anti-pope. Uh, so he goes on and says, as such, it is reasonable to ask if it makes sense for the society to accept a canonical recognition from the hands of Francis, given his questionable status. And I would argue that's exactly right. So if, if in fact the premise is that he is no Pope at all, then in fact he has no status to give. It's a, it's null and void. It's a moot point. But Louis strangely goes on to contend that it, it can't hurt. So it, it may not be of any, definitive value, canonically speaking, or in terms of jurisdiction or integration, or rather uh, unity with eternal Rome, but he says it can't, it can't hurt. So he says, the Society of St. Pius X has never been anything other than in full communion with the Church. The words of St. Athanasius are perfectly applicable here. They, Rome, have the buildings. We, the SSPX, have the faith. If Rome changes course and decides to formally recognize that the SSPX has the faith, granting them regular jurisdiction, doing so will be nothing more than a matter of justice. And here we get into um, what's become kind of a popular phrase, this matter of justice. It seemed to have started a few years ago, um, talking about more conversations with Rome, that it would be an act of justice or a matter of justice for Rome to recognize that the society and its bishops, priests, and faithful are in fact Catholic. And so he says there's, there's, this would just basically reaffirm uh, the objective truth that the society and its teachings are entirely Catholic. While locking the SSPX out of the building had no effect on that objective truth, it did profoundly affect, should be affect, AFF, the way in which the majority of undernourished Catholics view the society like a breakaway sect schismatic with questionable teachings and invalid sacraments. Regular jurisdiction for the SSPX will be of great benefit for those souls and their salvation, no matter who unlocks the building. And like it or not, they keys are in the hands of modernists right now. I think it's supposed to say the keys. The keys are in the hands of modernists right now. So Louis's premise here, if I'm correct, is that the society not having a formal recognition, i.e. a personal prelature or some kind of previously signed canonical agreement, has in fact kept souls out of the society and away from tradition who would have otherwise somehow found their way to tradition. And one could then potentially say, maybe even led to the damnation of souls that there's been no agreement up until now because many people have died since 1988 um, or since really the council and i guess we're left orphaned uh, is what this would suggest that if there had been a deal they would have somehow had their eyes opened but because there's been no deal they are they're left on the outside uh, where there's wailing and gnashing of teeth. Um, but that seems to contradict the nature of grace. And so I just wanted to quote St. Thomas Aquinas in the Summa. And this is from the second part of the Summa. There's a section on grace, second question. And St. Thomas Aquinas says, I answer that grace is taken two ways. First, as a habitual gift of God. Secondly, as a help from God who moves the soul to good. And he goes on a few sentences later and says, and thus even the good movement of the free will, whereby anyone is prepared 
for receiving the gift of grace is an act of the free will moved by God. And thus man is said to prepare himself according to Proverbs 16, verse 1. It is the part of man to prepare the soul. Yet it is principally from God who moves the free will. So grace is from God and from God alone. And God even, in fact, predisposes us to receive his grace. He moves or prompts our free will to receive his grace, to accomplish good deeds, to reveal the truth to us, and to be converted. Visible recognition and structures uh, have nothing to do with that. These, these two sentences and this entire premise that somehow more souls would be saved by, by a fuzzy, potentially scandalous deal with whom Louis attests to be an anti-pope would be of benefit. Uh, it just doesn't seem to add up. So he goes on and says, can the modernists be trusted? Hell no. Uh, I don't know. I've never been a fan of, I guess he's Italian and uses that for language, but I probably wouldn't have said that. Um, but what's the worst that can happen? It should be worst. What's the worst that could happen? Well, I can think of a few things. Um, for one, this could split the society even greater. So the worst that could happen was what started to happen in 2012. Kick out a bishop uh, and priest leave. Priests are kicked out and uh, many faithful have left. They've gone to uh, the resistance. So the society in its, of itself, two sides claiming the same thing, which is fidelity to the archbishop and to the traditions of the church. Some people have gone to Sedevicantus churches. Some people have left the faith altogether. They've just despaired. God help them. Some people have become Protestants. Some people have gone back to the Novus Ordo. Some people have gone to Ecclesia Dei. Some people have gone to the local Indal Mass. And some people are just staying home on Sundays because they can't go to the society church anymore by their conscience um, and, they, and they don't have another option. So that's the devil's supreme mission is to split us up. We read in Acts chapter 4 that the multitude of believers had but one heart and one soul. And St. Paul exhorts, exhorts all of us, but especially in his epistles to his direct audiences, for example, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10 and 13, to be of one mind and have no schisms amongst us. Now, obviously, there's formal schism, but we can use schism in the sense of any division. And that's what this, this, this would cause. This would definitively, it's not even a, a question. If a canonical personal prelature situation happens with Rome, it will cause more split within the society. And it will cause souls to leave and, and to be lost and to feel confusion. So that's one thing that could go wrong. The second thing is I would say, what, what's the best thing that could happen? Um, I, don't see any, I don't see any good coming from this. I don't see why they would do it. So he's saying this man's an anti-pope, but it'd be an act of justice to receive recognition from him. So just go ahead and do it. I, for one, I, for one, want nothing to do with uh, being painted as being visibly united to Pope Francis. It's bad enough that I go to work or I go out anywhere and I say that I'm Catholic. And other people who may be Catholic or especially Protestants uh, or even atheists, other people who are not traditional Catholic, say, oh, you're Catholic? Wow, man, I love Pope Francis. I just... I just love him. He's, he's, he's amazing. He's so humble or he loves the poor or what a change, you know, finally from other bad popes of the past. And, and, you know, depending on the person and the situation and how much time we have, I have to explain pretty candidly why I actually am not a fan of Pope Francis. And sometimes it gets to the point where I explain that I go to a society of St. Pius X chapel and I attend the Latin mass what, what do I say now if there's this recognition and imagine the picture or the photo put up with potentially Bishop Filet or somebody else shaking hands with Pope Francis and smiling 
as though everything is fine. So I'm, I'm just going to pause there because Louis doesn't seem to think that would happen. He thinks the exact opposite would happen. So they're going to get this act of justice from Rome, finally, after all these years, after all the divisions that have already happened, striving to get this, this recognition from an antichrist figure that we are Catholic. Uh, he says, I don't know what all the panic is about, but I must say that one of the things I would expect to see happen very shortly after the society's regularization, if that happens, is for Bishop Fillet to begin speaking publicly and forcefully on the matter of Amoris Letizia, the Dubia, and Francis's validity. Um, the latter, the last I can tell you will absolutely not happen. It just won't happen. There's no uh, evidence to point to that even being remotely questioned. Uh, I would imagine Bishop Fillet would say, that's not our thing, uh, or, or some something to that effect, some, some of the responses he's given in the past. And to speak forcefully on Amoris Laetitia or the Dubia, uh, it just hasn't happened yet. There's opportunity now. And so he says, I, th I think it's fair to say that society's public response to date has lacked. I would agree. Shall we say the kind of apostolic zeal that one might have expected given the offensiveness of the heresies and blasphemies in question? Yes, absolutely. I agree with you there, Louis. That is fact. That is absolutely true. Um, and were the Archbishop alive today, he would certainly be speaking out more loudly on this. Um, even the other three bishops who are less in the limelight, one separated from the other three, have been more vocal. Uh, but it's just not promoted. It's not. It's not pubbed as part of the uh, mainstream society media. Right or wrong, perhaps the decision was made to temper the response as an attempt to exercise prudence, given that formal jurisdiction appears near. Now, he's saying that tons of souls have missed out on coming into tradition up until now because there's no deal that's happened so far. So all these faithful who are scandalized by the accusations of the society being schismatic or whatever, um, you know, but haven't been able to, to, to see their way into tradition. And yet, this is probably a stronger case to me, which is to say, you're supposed to be the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. You've got to stand up and defend the truth. There's all kinds of quotes, and that's why, you know, we've signed this petition asking Bishop Fillet or somebody in the society to publicly denounce Francis for his crimes, especially those against, uh, you know, or, or promoting Lutheranism and, and religious indifferentism as it relates to Luther and Protestantism in general. That is more dangerous. Uh, the faithful need to know right from wrong, and they need to hear somebody, namely and hopefully especially a bishop, not all of us, you know, weak, uh, inconsequential lay people, but a bishop come out and denounce formally, loudly, and officially, and firmly, and clearly these errors. It has to happen. And it, we're grabbing on to, people are grabbing on to this dubia, you know, weak as it may be, or limited as it may be, because at least it's something. Finally, a cardinal is, you know, is saying something. So he, he keeps going and says, once the personal prelature either happens or it becomes obvious that this act of justice isn't so near after all, there can be no reason for Bishop Fillet to refrain any longer from plainly condemning Amoris Laetitia in its entirety in no uncertain terms, denouncing in particular the specific heresies and blasphemies that it contains. I, I agree. I agree. I keep praying that you will say something uh, loudly. I'm going to pray my rosary shortly after I finish recording this, and I will be praying for that very intention, and I will continue to pray for that intention, that he or somebody will publicly rebuke Francis to the face, cause a scene for the good of souls, for the good of souls, because they need to see it. It needs to be put into the public light we got to quit hiding our, our lamps under bushel baskets and out in chapels in remote parts of the world, out in the middle of the country, and, and go be a light 
you know, on top of a mountain for the world to see. Because it's dark. It's, it's, it's pitch black right now. And there's just a bunch of us opinionated, feeble-minded lay people chirping loudly, trying to do something positive. He goes on and says, this evil text needs to be incinerated and reduced to ash immediately. And the actual relationship of its author to the body of Christ needs to be addressed plainly. Yes, bingo. I, for one, am looking forward to the day when the Society of St. Pius X and Bishop Floyd will issue an unequivocal call for precisely this, whether this takes place with or without regular jurisdiction and needs to happen soon, the salvation of souls is at stake. I agree. I agree, but this is kind of a weird, disjointed... You know, he had a couple of grammatical errors, spelling error. I think he kind of put this together quickly, maybe trying to address some of these rumors. And I, you know, I, I admire Louis' zeal. I admire his his work and his desire to do, I, I think, really what is right to help spread Christendom. Um, but I disagree. I don't believe it would be an act of justice for an antichrist pope uh, or anti-pope. Who knows? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't make a statement either way. I just... Um, I just know he acts like the Antichrist. I don't get hung up on anti-pope or pope because he acts like the Antichrist. He is a wolf in sheep's clothing. And to expect an act of justice to come from a figure of such great injustice, a figure of, uh, you know, who seems to be the John the Baptist of the Antichrist, the type of John the Baptist, the, the, the precursor. He's laying the, the foundation for this Masonic one world religion type belief. Why would we expect an act of justice to come from him? And why would we want to be joined publicly and knowingly to him? Imagine what the secular media would do with us, if that's the case. I, I just had one last thought, I guess, too, uh, at least one that I'm thinking of. Um, or a couple maybe, just to close. One, so when Francis announced his year of mercy and that the, the society would officially have, at least for one year and now continued, uh, official jurisdiction to hear confessions validly, did we see some kind of inundation, uh, you know, waves of people suddenly flooding into the society because of... The, this clarification that this, the sacraments were all now for sure valid. No, no, we did not. No, they, they didn't come. No extra people who had previously been scandalized came into the society. Very few. I don't know of anybody. And I talked to quite a few different people in a bit, the different chapels. I don't know of anybody. Secondly, same thing a few years ago when the excommunications were, were lifted, not uh, nullified but lifted, same thing, nothing happened. Because people are where they are. They're where they are right now. And the only way they're going to come to truth and come to the society is by grace, is by God's grace, which which reveals all things, which illuminates all things, which has no need of anything uh, by man, except for an individual cooperation with that grace, an act of the free will, to see the truth. So... These same people stay in the adult or they stay in their Glazy Day, Fraternity of St. Peter, whatever, churches, and they will. It doesn't matter what happens to the society. Nobody's going to suddenly shift to the society if we get this personal prelature. It's, I just think it's unreasonable to expect that. Second thought. Uh, It's said by Bishop Fillet that Rome is now seeming to come around to the idea of recognizing that the society is Catholic and doesn't need to accept Vatican II to be seen as Catholic. But we don't hear really anything of asking the opposite question, which is, what about Francis and those who accept and promote Vatican II and espouse modernist ideologies? Are they Catholic? What value is it to have an Antichrist Pope figure 
declaring that we are Catholic when in really what he's saying is we both are Catholic. There's nothing to smile about in that statement. There's nothing. When somebody, when a heretic says, hey, we're both the same, you and I, we're both Catholics, that that would be no different than, than Arius having said to St. Athanasius, well, we're both Catholic here, right? You know, let's just acknowledge, we'll hash out the details later, but I believe you're Catholic. Wouldn't have happened. St. Athanasius would have maybe punched him in the face like St. Nicholas did, apparently, to a heretic. It wouldn't have happened. He wouldn't have said, yeah, I agree, okay, I agree. Or he wouldn't have just kept his mouth shut and said, well, thank you for acknowledging that I'm Catholic. We'll, we'll deal with your problems later. I just I don't think that would happen. Um, I think I had one last thought. I guess maybe that's all for now, but I uh, wanted to share some comments on Louis Verecchio's post and recent happenings with the society, and I am just praying that all of us can find clarity amidst turbulent waters, just like the gospel uh, reading that we heard recently. We'd be strong of faith. I get scared when things get, you know, when the ship rocks, our Lord said, you weak of faith, why do you worry I'm in control? So maybe Louis is right about one thing, that he doesn't know what all the panic is about. First and foremost, we do have to worry about our own souls and pray for the grace of perseverance. So that's what I'm going to go do. God bless.